Hi, my name's Alan Smith. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can generate an intelligent image search by leveraging Azure Cognitive Search and Azure Cognitive Services. It's the first in a series of webcasts where I'll be looking at the functionality of Azure Cognitive Services. So click on subscribe if you'd like to be notified when new webcasts are published. Okay, so if we're gonna test the cognitive service, we're gonna need a, a bunch of photos to be able to search with. And the easiest way I've found to get these photos is to go to Google, go to the image search and type something in. So I really just want some random photos that I can work with image searching. So I'm just gonna type random photos into the search and press enter. And you can see that we're getting a bunch of random and some very strange photos uh, coming up here in the Google image search. And hopefully Google's AI is gonna filter out any explicit content so we don't see anything too racy. I'm gonna scroll down through all of these images, click on show more results, and scroll down again to get as many images in the page as possible. And you can see that we've got a great variety of different types of images there. I'm gonna save the entire web page. I'm gonna do right click, save as, drop down to my AI data folder, and save the web page, which should also save all of the images contained in the web page. And navigating to that folder, you can see that another folder has been created for the website content. I'm gonna to browse to this folder. Now the vast majority of these files are images, but a few of them are other files. So I'm gonna delete those other files. So we do have 814 image files, but they don't have any file extensions. So in the location box, I'm gonna type CMD to open a command prompt. And I'm gonna type REN star dot star dot JPEG which is gonna rename any file without an extension to a JPEG file. And in Windows Explorer, I can flip to the thumbnails view. And you can see that we've got 814 image files containing the random photos. So using the Google image search is a really easy way of being able to generate a ton of test data to be able to test the cognitive services imaging capabilities. So in the Azure portal, I've created a resource group called Cognitive Search Webcasts, where I can create the resources that we'll need. So first up, we'll need an instance of the Cognitive Search Service. So I'll search for search, click Azure Cognitive Search, and click on Create. So I'll select the region as West Europe. And in the pricing option, I'm gonna select Basic. We do have a free option, but it's quite limited in terms of capacity. The basic option is gonna cost around 65 euros a month. And I'm only gonna be having it active for a few hours whilst I'm recording this webcast. So it's gonna be a pretty cheap demo. Well, cheap in terms of the Azure resources that we're consuming. For the URL of the service, I'm going to enter search webcasts. And let's create that search service. The photos that are downloaded are going to be stored in blob storage so that the search service can index them. So I'm going to need to create a new storage account for that. And again, I'll create that within the West Europe region. And in that storage account, I'm going to create a new blob container called Photos. And when I'm creating that container, I'm going to set the public access level to blob. And you'll see why I do that later on. And in that container, I'll click Upload, navigate to the Photos folder, and select to upload all of those files. And there we go, I've got all of those files uploaded into blob storage. So I'm going to select one of those photos, copy the URL for that photo, and paste it into a new browser tab. And you can see that the photo is displayed in the browser. And the reason for this is that I selected anonymous access for blobs when I was creating the photos container. So if we have the URL of the blob, we can display it in the browser. And that's gonna be really useful when we're building a website that's gonna search and display these images. In order to make sense of all the photos, we're going to use Azure Cognitive Services. So let's create an instance of cognitive services within the resource group. And create it in the West Europe region, along with the other resources. And I'll just select the standard pricing for this service. Okay, so let's create that. Going back to the search service, I need to create a few things here. I need to create a data source that's going to link to the photos in blob storage. I'm going to need to create an index to search the photos and also an indexer, which is gonna be the process which will read the images in the data source and populate the index. And there's a really easy way to do this in the portal. I'm gonna click import data. 
and I can specify the data source type as being as or blob storage. I'll give it the name of random photos and I'll copy this name because I'll be using that later on as I go through the dialog pages. I'm going to select an existing storage connection. The storage account is going to be Cognitive Services Webcasts and the blob container is going to be Photos. We've now got the option to add the cognitive skills to this so we can process and understand these images. In the Attach Cognitive Services section, you can see that I can use a free option or I can use a Cognitive Services instance that I just created. The free option is really limited in capacity, so the 800 and something images that I want to index is going to exceed the capacity of the free option. So let's select the Cognitive Services instance that I created, which is on the standard pricing tier. The next thing we're going to do is to choose the enhancements that we're going to make with Cognitive Services. And these enhancements are going to be placed in something called a skill set. And I'll set the name of this to Random Photo Skill Set. So you can see that we've got a bunch of text cognitive skills. We'll look at these later when we look at the text search capabilities, but I really want to work with some image cognitive skills. The current portal design makes accessing these skills a bit cryptic. What I need to do is to click on Enable OCR and merge all text into a merge content field, which is really related to the OCR capabilities when processing images. But when I make that checkbox, you can see that we get the image cognitive skills displayed at the bottom. And I can select those, which is going to generate tags, captions, and hopefully identify any celebrities in these images. So getting to those settings is a bit cryptic, and they may well change the portal in the future to make this easier. So let's move on and create the index. I'll rename the index Random Photos Index, and scroll down the settings. And for image tags, image caption, and image celebrities, I'm going to make these index fields filterable and facetable. And we'll look at what that means later on. The next step is to create the indexer, which is going to be the process that is going to populate the index. Now, if your data is changing frequently, you may want to automatically recreate the index on an hourly or daily basis, or use a custom schedule. But my data is going to be fairly static, so I'll just create this process once. So let's click Submit to kick off that process. And here we can see that the indexer is currently processing. It will take about a minute or so to process all of these images, so I'll pause the recording whilst that takes place. So we've processed 814 images successfully. We did get a few warnings, but let's not worry about those right now. So I can navigate back to the Cognitive Search service and browse to the Random Photos Index. And the Search Explorer allows us to make queries on this index from within the Azure portal. So let's search for dog. And the first search result is very topical. Day 18 of lockdown, fill the dog with helium. It's looking like this text has come from the optical character recognition capabilities of Azure Cognitive Services. The metadata storage path points to the URL of the blob that contains that image. However, it's base64 encoded. So let's copy the value, Google for a site that can decode that for us, and use that site to decode that value. And you can see that it's giving us a URL of a blob in blob storage. So let's open a new tab and navigate to that URL. We can see that the image is indeed a dog that's full of helium. Scrolling down a bit, we can see more details about the search index. We can see the image tags, dog, text, carnivore, and animal. And we can see the image caption, a screenshot of a dog, and it's predicting that with about 90% confidence. So let's try searching for bird. And let's pick the second result this time. I'll copy the path, decode it, and paste the URL into a new tab. You can see it's a photo of a peacock walking on grass. You can see we've got a nice set of image tags for this image. And we've got a caption, a bird sitting on top of a grass covered field with 51% confidence. Copying and decoding and pasting those links is a bit clunky. So I've built a really simple website that's gonna allow me to search using Cognitive Search a lot easier and display all of the results. This website is based on the sample code in the Azure Cognitive Search tutorials. You can see in the app settings that I've configured the URL and the key for the search service that I'm working with. So let's fire up this website and see how we can search the images. 
So I'll click on image search and let's enter dog. And here we can see the screenshot of the dog coming up as a top image. The next image is a screenshot from Word. And you can see the text, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And the caption for that does actually have a 98% confidence that this is a screenshot of Word. In the next few images, we can see that the caption is pretty good at identifying what the image is and providing a fairly reasonable caption for that image. Even if we try to confuse it by dressing a dog up as a unicorn, it still recognizes it as a dog. Let's try searching for cat. And you can see that it's displaying quite a few images of cats. A cat with its mouth open does seem to be quite a popular caption. So let's just try searching for that. So here we've got a number of animals, some of which are cats and some of which have their mouths open. I can try searching for car. We've got three images with pictures of cars in and one that mentions the car in the text of the image. I can search for tree. Because I've mentioned random in the search, we get images of trees from a random forest algorithm, which is one of the algorithms that we can use within machine learning. Scrolling down a bit, we do get pictures of trees appearing. Let's search for bird. And you can see that we get photos of birds. If I mouse over on one of these images, we can see the image tags that were identified. You can see it's got animal, sitting, bird, snow, outdoor, perched. And it's also predicting that this bird is a northern cardinal. You can see the results of searching for fish, searching for phone, and searching for computer. So we can see that by combining Azor Search with Azor Cognitive Services to make Azor Cognitive Search, we've got a very quick and productive way of being able to generate intelligent search on images and photos and leverage OCR to recognize text in those images. Creating that image search index was a quick and easy process that didn't involve writing any code. And it's fairly straightforward to integrate a website to be able to leverage that search. You'll notice that some of the captions are not spot on, and a few of them are quite funny, but I think the predictions are pretty good. And bear in mind that cognitive services is pretty much evolving on a daily basis. So over time, these predictions are gonna get a lot better and a lot more accurate.